We have a frontal boundary moving through as we speak. That's going to help usher in more wind and a little bit of rain overnight in a couple of areas with low temperatures noticeably milder compared to last night. We'll be in the 40s and low 50s. Another chance for scattered showers comes around, especially the farther east you go on Wednesday. Those temperatures take a step backward tomorrow, and we also kick the wind up a notch or two. We'll talk about that, and we'll go through the rest of your seven-day forecast in a little bit. But until then, first to four starts right now. Live from Killaland Media Group, Killaland News, first at four. The mother of Jacob Wetterly was kidnapped and killed more than 30 years ago is now released a new book about the search for her son. Plus, we talk with the Augustana hockey team about its first home game on the ice in Sioux Falls. And later, the marching band season may be winding down, but one local group is preparing for its biggest competition of the year. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning into First of Four. I'm Dan Centella. And I'm Kelly Volk. It's a case that haunted people in Kelloland for years. The abduction and killing of 11-year-old Jacob Wetterling. The boy was kidnapped in central Minnesota in the late 80s, and the case went unsolved for nearly 30 years. Today, a new book is out that details what the Wetterlings went through during a decades-long search for answers. Coming up tonight on Kelloland News at 10, we'll revisit the case that people followed for years. A 30-year-old man is behind bars, accused of threatening to burn down a business in Yankton. Court papers say on Monday, Jared Nichols threatened to burn down a hy vee and had mentioned a pipe bomb. Later, someone at Walmart called police to report that Nichols was buying suspicious items. Investigators say after Nichols was arrested, he told one of the officers he was going to violate her. Authorities say it's thanks to people alerting law enforcement about this suspicious behavior that they were able to make an arrest. A Nebraska officer and a suspect are in the hospital after police say a man stabbed the officer in the neck. Investigators say the incident started early this morning in Lincoln when a man didn't have money to purchase a ticket but refused to get off the bus. Police say the suspect stabbed one of the officers who responded and tried to grab the officer's gun. That's when law enforcement shot the man. The police department says the officer will survive and is in good spirits. Once the suspect is released from the hospital, he will be arrested and charged with assault. He's also accused of stealing an RV. Really nice weather out there. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better fall day out there, Adam. Yeah, maybe take the temperature down a degree or two. It's been a little on the warm side in a couple of areas, especially West River. We'll get in on that in a moment. But overall, yeah, plenty of sunshine. Hasn't been too windy. Haven't had any active weather to worry about. Perfect opportunity to get outside for just about anyone. Here's Great Bear 71 here in Sioux Falls with a south wind at 13 miles per hour, or now up to 15 miles per hour, rather, with a temperature at 73. Oh, the beauties of live television. Uh, meanwhile, in Aberdeen, notice all the trees starting to change more and more. 75, that's a view to the west with a south wind of 17 miles per hour. Also notice the cloud cover starting to increase a little bit more as we go through the afternoon and evening. We got up to 84 in Valentine today. That's summer weather over there. 78 in Pierre as well as Rapid City. 75 Spearfish, 72 in Custer, 73 Huron and Chamberlain, 70 Brookings. A couple of holdouts in the upper, upper 60s, though. That's Watertown and Worthington, both at 69 degrees. The wind has been picking up a little bit. Still tolerable. It's around 10 to 15 miles per hour, but ahead of that cold front, it is out of the south. Behind it, it's more out of the northwest. And that wind is going to be something that we watch as we go into the day on Wednesday. Uh, wind advisory is in place for everybody shaded in tan as far south and east as Tripp County, going all along I-90 from Jackson County to the Wyoming border and all the way up to Buffalo in Harding County. Wind gusts may reach and exceed 50 miles per hour at times through Wednesday afternoon. Even outside of the advisory area, we're still looking at a decently windy day for your Wednesday outlook. Speaking of that Wednesday outlook, it's also cooler 
Upper 50s and low 60s for high temperatures in southeastern and northeastern Kelowland. A lot of wind and some rain to boot. Not a whole lot of rain, but still something to keep in mind as you go about your Wednesday routine. Out west, also noticeably cooler, but also very windy. Notice those wind speeds out of Rapid City. 30 to 50 mile per hour winds not out of the question toward the hills. We'll talk about the rest of your seven day forecast, which by and large is pretty quiet. All coming up as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. Republicans have rejected Congressman Jim Jordan for House Speaker on the first ballot. More voting is expected today as the staunch ally of Donald Trump works to shore up support. Kelly News, Washington, D.C. correspondent Alexander Limon has the latest on the Rocky process. It is indeed going to be a rocky process. Not only did Republican nominee Jim Jordan fail to get enough votes on the first round to become speaker, he also got fewer votes than Democrat Hakeem Jeffries. I rise today to nominate the gentleman from Ohio, Jim Jordan, as Speaker of the People's House. Republican nominee for Speaker of the House, Jim Jordan, failed to clench the speakership in the first round of votes. The speaker has not been elected. We are here because this hallowed chamber has been led to a breaking point by two dangerous forces, extremism and partisanship. Democrats like California's Pete Aguilar slammed Republicans for removing Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House with no clear plan for how to replace him. This is a Republican caucus problem caused by the Republican caucus. Democrats say it isn't their job to bail out Republicans, especially since even all Republicans can't agree on supporting their nominee. And even though Republicans hold the majority in the House, in a first round vote, Democrat Hakeem Jeffries got more votes to become speaker than Jim Jordan. I, I believe we're going to get Jim Jordan across the finish line. Republicans expected a difficult process with more than one round of voting, but many in the party said they had to move forward with Jordan as a nominee. If he can't do it, I don't know who can, quite frankly. And although Democrat Hakeem Jeffries did get more votes, he didn't get the 217 votes needed to win. So now some Republicans are saying they're going to take as many votes as needed until Jim Jordan becomes speaker. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. South Dakota Congressman Dusty Johnson voted for Jordan to become the next speaker. There was some controversy at the University of Minnesota last night. Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett spoke on campus, a visit that hundreds of students said shouldn't have happened. People protested the justice and some of her decisions. They also voiced concerns about the next term for the court, which could include decisions on immigration. However, some students saw value in her appearance at the U of M. I really just want her to see, and again, all government officials, to see that college students especially, who are new in the voting scene, I'm freshly 18, you know, I'm, I'm just able to vote, um, that we had an opinion on Roe v. Wade that we don't entirely feel was listened to. I think it's very rare that we get to see the internal workings of a court that's so far, like, up. Um, it's the highest court in the nation, and I think it's useful to have that perspective to balance out the theories that we learn in class with how it's actually applied in practice in the real world. The interim dean at the School of Law says it's important to bring guests to campus with different views that challenge students. He also says it's important that students exercise their First Amendment rights to protest.